and I've just recently converted to Islam one and a half years ago. I was never like all the other kids, you know, like going out, having drugs, going to the movies. I was always really quiet, and I was always I was pretty religious, um, spiritual, and I was always searching for something like the truth. I was in Brisbane and Shehelia, um, my friend, he was in Perth, and we used to chat on the internet, mainly about cricket, because um, when we used to go on the cricket internet chat, and was, we used to go there and just t basically talk about cricket, but religion started coming into it later on, because I found out that he was a Muslim and I was a Christian, and I was doing uh, an assignment at school because I was going to a Christian school and, and I had a Bible class and I had to do an assignment on a different religion and I just happened to choose Islam and so I knew that Shahediyah was a Muslim and so I was asking him questions you know, um, what does Islam believe? what are the five pillars of Islam? Uh, uh, who was Muhammad? Wasalam. And I kept on wanting to know more and know more, and after a while, I just found it just so amazing, I just had to convert. I accepted Islam um, in my heart in July of 2000. And I had to keep it all to myself, because I could, it wasn't the right time to tell family then. And I was just learning about Islam slowly and slowly, and we organized for Shehelia, my best friend, to come over to Brisbane. And there we'd go to the masjid and I'd accept Islam properly with the Imam. Then the third day of his arrival, we went to the masjid and I converted. And we were discussing how to tell my family. Um, uh, we were discussing how to tell my family. And we, first of all, we told my mother. You know, she didn't take it too well and she said, a pretty harsh comment, which I can't really forget. She said, uh, if, if I knew you wanted to become a Muslim, I would have had an abortion, which was pretty harsh. Um, but after that, well, I sort of spoke to her, and she settled down. Um, and she sort of accepted it. She was even willing um, to go look at the religion herself, uh, which was really good. Um, when we told my father, he was... Uh, pretty fine with it as well. Shehelia one night told my father, I was actually sick that night, but he told my father and he was fine with it. But the next morning, everything sort of just changed and it was mainly because of my grandparents, because they are very strict Christians. Uh, my grandfather is pretty much a pastor of his church that they go to and they sort of talked with my parents and they really sort of brainwashed them and Ever since then, they've been really harsh on me. They wouldn't let me become a Muslim. Uh, Shehelia Sufi had to go back, back to Perth. And when he left, um, my dad said to me that if I ever went to the masjid, and uh, he'd bring the police. I wasn't a Muslim. I was just pretending, you know, I'm gonna um, just forget about the religion. But in my in my heart and in my mind, uh, I was a Muslim, and I was still researching. I was still researching, reading articles on Islam, and going to different websites and just talking about it with others. Well, I knew that I couldn't live Islam like this, just in my head. I had to practice it practically. So basically, we, I said to Shalia um, that I had to, I want to basically move out. Uh, we went through quite a bit of a struggle, and Shalia, he's done so much planning, he'll never believe it, you know. He stayed up, stayed up for so many nights trying to plan and organize, asking people for money and donation in order to help me get to Perth. From Brisbane, even we we researched uh, legal websites to see how old you have to be to move out, and you know, we we know that 16 is the legal age, and what my family are doing is quite wrong, so we, it is legal to move out. So we researched everything, and we planned everything, and got and eventually got the money, and Jahabia came over to Brisbane in just December uh, in 2001 and we basically we were, um, saw each other secretly I was pretending I was going with a friend to play cricket at the cricket nets uh, but I was really deceiving my family and going to the masjid the Shehelia because I hadn't been to the masjid in the whole year you know and uh, it was really good when I was at the masjid and praying properly 
there is a huge amount of difference, you know. The whole, the whole idea for me to move from Brisbane to Perth was to get, experience this difference. In Brisbane, I was not able to uh, practice Islam at all. It was all in my head. Even prayers I had to do in my head, I couldn't do them. I couldn't pray Salat physically. Uh, ever since I've come to Perth, uh, I've known I've been able to go to the masjid all the time, you know. Uh, I've been able to pray properly five times a day. I've been able to pray all the sunnahs and all the nafils and witr and everything. Uh, I've been, uh, just been able to uh, eat properly as well, eat good food, uh, eating curries and things. But in Brisbane, I wasn't uh, given too much food because my mother was quite harsh on me ever since she found out that I was a Muslim. And now I can actually uh, eat properly. I'm gaining weight and everything. And I'm meeting so many good new friends, you know, um, Muslim friends, of course. Uh, it's just a great environment. I'm in the right environment now. Before, I was in a kafir environment, so I was getting bad ideas into my head, going to a Christian school. and But now, alhamdulillah, I'm enrolled, actually, now at the Australian Islamic College in Hudal. And so I'm going to, when I go for my year 12, my education there, I'm going to be in an Islamic environment all the time. Before accepting Islam, I was very... Uh, I, mean, I was going out with friends that didn't really like me, but I still went out just to have fun. Um, I used to watch a lot of movies that had dirty things in them. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really go out and have drugs or anything, or... I wasn't, I wasn't like um, any, you know, normal Westerner. I was still pretty religious at the time, but I wasn't deeply, deeply religious. I was, uh, and I know I was in the wrong faith. I was in the Christian faith. I didn't even really go to church, actually. I sort of just stayed at home, mostly. Um, but I did go out a lot, and I used to hang around with friends quite a lot. But after Islam, I've really, really just wanted to research so much about Islam, and I've read so many articles, and mainly I've just when I was in Brisbane, I mainly just stayed at home because I didn't really want to hang out with those people. Mm -hmm. uh, they were quite bad, and they, they sort of influenced me in bad ideas, so I kept away from them, and I kept to myself, and I was researching lots of Islam and talking to Shalia. He was giving me lots of things to read, uh, good things to read about Islam. And he was actually lecturing me myself, because he's quite qualified. Uh, he actually studied in South Africa with Ahmed Didat, because I couldn't actually practice Islam in Brisbane properly, even after my conversion, I just had to move here. And now I'm wearing Islamic clothes before I wasn't, before my conversion. And even in Brisbane, I wasn't able to wear good clothes like these. And, you know, it feels really great to be able to wear this and use miswak on your teeth and uh, be able to pray. It really is a different lifestyle, um, cultural habits as well. Uh, you know, being different foods that are better for me now. Uh, yeah, I like it a lot better like this. Uh, well, uh, I converted before September 11, so I didn't have um, that. Bo I didn't have anything to do with jihad or bombings in my mind. Uh, even I did speak with Shahelia about, um, you know, what, what, why do um, some of the Muslims uh, actually fight, like, uh, and call it jihad and stuff. And it, everything was explained to me, and I totally accepted that in my mind because, you know, we have a reason for it. Uh, we're actually being oppressed, and you know this is. I actually learnt the truth because all of my um, knowledge beforehand was from Western media, and uh, you know they they really really deceive you. Um, but uh, when I converted, I didn't really think of um, jihad at all or anything. That was sort of brought into it after. And the main reason why I converted was because it was the truth. You know, it was proven to be the truth. Every single point in Islam, in the Quran, in the Hadith, just makes so much sense. There's not a single fault. Um, anyone that tries to bring up a fault can be proven wrong. Even I tried to bring up faults in Islam before when I was a Christian and jihadi just proved me so wrong and that was the main reason for my conversion. I think people who um, want to convert because of jihad and bombings and stuff, I think I don't think they've got the right idea. I think they should really see what's beyond that and see the reasons why we're doing this, you know. Well, when we were first planning it, we actually sort of um, decided that we would go by car. Shehelia and his friends, um, Rahan Fahim and Saladin, 
would come by car over from Perth uh, all the way across to Brisbane. And when my mum would go shopping, we would um, sort of just sneak out and sneak out, pack, up, pack as much of my stuff as possible, put it in the car and go back. But uh, we couldn't really use the car um, for a number of reasons. One, we got in a big crash and it didn't work. So um, we sort of had to really make up a new plot. And we thought that the best and quickest method would just be to go by plane. And so Shaharia um, just got some money. Uh, he asked a lot of people for help. And he was able to save up money and buy e-tickets with Qantas. And he'd um, come with another brother, another friend of ours, Rehan, Rehan Khan. And they'd go from Perth to Brisbane. Uh, they'd stay there for four days. Uh, then we all, uh, Rahan actually would have to go leave early to go to Melbourne early, um, earlier than us. We'd go a few hours later, but we'd all meet up in Melbourne, and then we'd go on the same plane from Melbourne to Perth. Um, that was the idea. They bought the e-tickets, and um, Shahadi actually bought me a mobile phone um, so we could keep in contact secretly, because the only phone that I had in my house was the home phone, and that could be also be used by my mother. So I didn't really want to use that phone. I wanted to use uh, something that was more private, and Shahadia sent over a mobile phone, and that had some credit on it. And we were able to speak on that. Uh, we actually um, talked a lot on that, and used secret SMS messages, in case my mum was around. Um, when he, when, and when they came over here, that was our main source of um, contact when we weren't together. Uh, on the first day, the first few days, uh, all, the, all the days actually, um, when they were here, I was just secretly saying to my mother that I'm going to the cricket nets um, just to play cricket with a friend. And I actually did go to the nets uh, where Shahedi was waiting for me and he actually hired a car from one of the brothers who was staying in Idakaf at the masjid. He uh, hired a car from him and he was able to pick me up from the cricket nets and we'd go to the masjid and, uh, that w and stay there for the whole day. And well, during that time my mum thought that I was playing cricket. And we did this um, for the next, um, all the days. And on the last day, when it was time for me to leave in the morning, we had the same idea. Um, I'd just pretend to go to the nets and everything. But during the night, someone actually rang uh, and said, there's this person who is going to kidnap your son. Uh, this, this guy actually was talking to my mother. He rang the home phone. This is, um, he was saying that, he was talking to my mother that there's some guy, he's going to kidnap your son and he's going to take him to Afghanistan and go on jihad. And um, that really was a huge lie. Um, whether it was a Muslim or not, we don't know, but whoever it is, you know, we should kill them. Uh, they're a big traitor, for sure. Uh, they actually sort of... It was a complete lie, but it was enough to make my mum really scared and try and prevent me from going to the cricket nets uh, the next day, which was the day that I had to go and escape and fly to Perth. So I basically I tried as much as I could just to calm her down, saying, oh, it's a crank phone call, don't worry, I'm fine. It was probably some guys behind us that were playing cricket and I dropped my phone number. I was just saying stuff like that and she eventually believed it. Uh, in the morning she fell asleep and I packed as much stuff as I could and, uh, in a cricket bag. I took um, some books, Islamic clothing, uh, Islamic books of mine. I just took them all, put them in a cricket bag along with my cricket gear and went off, met Shahedi out there. He was waiting for me and from there we went straight to the airport. Uh, off to Perth, and when we were flying from Brisbane, well actually, we, when we went to the airport, we actually had to wait about four hours, uh, four hours until our plane departed, and we were like really scared. We thought, oh no, what if my parents come and see me? So <laughs> we actually had to hide in the airport toilets um, for a few hours until our plane was ready to, to part, to part. Once we left the toilets, we went. Um, and we boarded the plane, and we thought we were fine. But 
when we arrived in Melbourne, there were police waiting for us, and um, they were just asking, you know, what's going